AB Calculus, Section 5.4, page 8. Okay, we are given the graph of y equals f of x and some other function h of x, which is the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. So the first thing that I want you to do is to label this function. This is y equals f of x. And we see our window over here set at x between 0 and 12. So x, 0, up to 12, counting off by 1s. So that puts that 6 right there. Um, y values between negative 4 and 8 up here. Okay, so now let's look at this one. We need to find h of 0. H, the h function is this right here. So h of 0 is going to be to replace this x with 0. h of 0 is the integral from 0 to 0 of f of t dt. That means find the area underneath this f function from 0 to 0, which is nothing, 0. Looking at this next one over here, we want to estimate h of 6. And h of 6 is the integral from 0 to 6 of f of t dt, which visually is the area underneath this f function from 0 to 6. Which is that. And we don't know the the equation of f of x, so I can't do an antiderivative on this one. What we can do is estimate h of 6 by using 3 rectangle. And let's just divide this up into 3 regions here, where each region is 2y times, and then the height, Let's use midpoint height. Those are the most accurate of left and right, or midpoint. So I see a height here of about maybe 7.5 or so, plus this middle rectangle, maybe a height of 5, plus this last rectangle here, height 2. That's going to give us 2 times 14.5. Um, which is 29. So h of 6 is approximately 29. All right, let's look at this. When is h increasing? All right, we do not have a graph of h. We can still talk about when is h increasing. h is increasing when h prime is greater than 0. We don't have h prime either, but we do have h, and we can take a look at this. To find h prime, that means to do a derivative on h. So I took this h function right here, and we did a derivative on both sides. The left side is h prime. The right side is the derivative here. Oh, look at that, a derivative of an integral. That is just substituting that x into here, so that is f of x. Oh, what does that tell us? That tells us that this graph, f of x, can also be thought of as h prime of x. So now we can look and see where is h increasing. h increases when h prime is greater than 0. This is the graph of h prime now. So h prime is greater than 0 when x is between 0 and 6. And that's it right there. Looking at this next one, when is h concave up? In order for h to be concave up, that means that h double prime is greater than 0, which means h 
prime is increasing. Oops, is. So again, looking back, this is now we can think of as the graph of H prime. When is this graph increasing? Looks like right about here, and that's about nine and a half. So H prime is increasing when X is between nine and a half, excuse me, and 12. Okay, when is H of 12 positive, or excuse me, is H of 12 positive or negative? H of 12 is the integral from 0 to 12 of f of t dt. So that's talking about the area from 0 to 12. Area from 0 to 12. Oh, but we're evaluating an integral, so this stuff underneath the x-axis is negative. So we really need to decide, do you have more stuff above the x-axis or more stuff below the x-axis? Are they equal amounts? What's the situation here? And we see we have more area above the x-axis, so h of 12 must be positive. There is more area above the x-axis. than below. I think this pen is dying. I better toss it away. All right, last or last few down here. When does H reach its maximum? And we know that H has a maximum when H is changing from increasing to decreasing or at endpoints. For H to change from increasing to decreasing, that means that H prime changes from positive to negative. And looking back at our graph, again, this is the graph of H prime. This graph changes from positive to negative at 6. This piece occurs at x is 6. The endpoints are at 0 and 12. So we need to compare h of 6 versus h of 0 versus h of 12. h of 6 we uh, determined earlier today and are on this page at part b that was about 29. h of 0 that was up there in part a that's 0. And h of 12, we talked about in part E, and we knew that that was positive. All right, looking for a maximum on h. Clearly, 0 is out. And now we just need to decide, is it at 6 or at 12? If we look back at the graph and think about area accumulating, all the way up until 6, we have a value of area in here of 29. Then moving beyond 6, we start subtracting off area because this is all negative. So while h of 12 is positive, it is less than h of 6. So answering the question here, when does h reach its maximum value? Right here, h reaches its maximum at x equals All right, how about when does H reach its minimum then? And for H to have a minimum, that means that H has to change from decreasing to increasing or at the end points, which means H prime has to change from negative to positive. And looking back at our graph, H prime changing from a negative value to a positive value. 
does not happen. End points then, same, x equals 0, x equals 12. So we will have to compare h of 0 versus h of 12, which we've done. h of 0 is 0, h of 12 is a positive number. And we want the minimum value here. The minimum value occurs at x equals 0. Here we go. Thank you. If this was confusing for you, go back, rewind, listen to it again. Pause, listen to what I say, then pause the video and think about the words that I've said. Please join me for page nine for another example of this type of application of the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus.